Hey everyone, it's me Pratima and I am really excited about today's video because I will be comparing all the flagship processors that will power high-end phones this year, which includes Apple's A17 Pro, Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and the Dimensity 9300 from MediaTek. The one thing that you need to know right away is that all three of these chip makers have really, like, I mean, really stepped up their game this time. 2023 was already a great year for mobile chip industry, especially in the Android space. But somehow, Qualcomm and MediaTek both have managed to take things even further. Whereas the A17 Pro is the most important chip Apple has ever put on an iPhone. So needless to say, I was super pumped to find out how all three of them perform. Okay, before I start the comparison, let's get a little familiar with the chips themselves since there are quite a few interesting things this time around. But if you don't want all those details, you can just go ahead and skip directly to the benchmarks from the timestamp below. Okay, let's start with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, where Qualcomm has once again dropped efficiency cores in its flagship mobile processor. The 8 Gen 1 had four of them compared to three on the 8 Gen 2, and this guy only brings two efficiency cores. This means the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 now has a OnePlus 5 Plus 2 CPU cluster, which includes one high-performance Cortex-X4, five mid-performance Cortex-A720, and a couple of Cortex-A520 efficiency cores I just talked about. And Qualcomm says you can expect 30% faster CPU performance from the 8 Gen 3 on top of 20% better power efficiency. The new Adreno 750 GPU also promises an impressive 25% faster performance, 25% better efficiency, and 40% better hardware-based ray tracing. Whereas, by switching to TSMC's 2nd Gen 4 NM process, besides other architectural changes, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3's overall power savings have apparently improved up to 10% as well. Then there's the Diamond City 9300. Like the 8 Gen 3, it also uses ARM version 9.2 based design, but what's insane about it is that media MediaTek has used an all big core CPU design here, which is something we have not seen on an ARM chip ever. MediaTek has completely ignored the efficiency-focused A520 cores in favor of four Cortex-X4 and four Cortex-A720 cores, which seemingly managed 15% better performance at the same power versus last year's Dimensity 9200, or even hit a 40% higher peak performance. The GPU side of things sees some healthy upgrades too. ARM's Immortalis G720 GPU on the Dimensity 9300 now has a 12-core design, and the company says that there's 46% peak performance performance and a 46% boost in ray tracing to look forward to here. The Diamond City 9300 is also manufactured under TSMC's newer 3rd Gen 4 NM process, although I could not find any information on how or if it's better than the 2nd Gen N4 P node. Apart from all the usual raw performance uplifts, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and the Diamond City 9300 both promise absurd on-device generative AI capabilities, and I guess I'm kind of excited to see just how useful they're going to be. But at this moment, there's simply no way to even test how well they work. As for the A17 Pro, Apple is not quoting as dramatic of a performance upgrade as Qualcomm and MediaTek, but there certainly are a few things to get excited about. The A17 Pro uses a familiar 6-core CPU design which consists of two high performance and four efficiency cores. And with a slightly higher clock speed mixed with other design changes, Apple says the A17 Pro CPU is up to 10% faster compared to the one on the A16 Bionic. But the graphics is where things get interesting on the A17 Pro. It's got a 20% faster GPU thanks to exactly 20% more GPU core, and Apple is also really pushing for that gaming crown now. With features like hardware-based ray tracing and a DLSS-like upscaling tech called Metal FX Upscaling, Apple is even bringing native iOS ports of a few AAA console games, so I guess it's a fair game to call this a Pro-class GPU after all. The A17 Pro is also the only mobile chip fabricated under A3 NM process. Anyways, let's get into the benchmarks now. For this test, I've got the iQ12 that's powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, the Vivo X100 Pro with Diamond City 9300 inside, and the iPhone 15 Pro Max with the A17 Pro chip. I've also enabled high performance mode on all three of them for the best result. And looking at the Antutu scores, we can see that Qualcomm and MediaTek are once again way too ahead of Apple here. 
The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 leads the chart with a score of a little over 2 million, followed closely by the Diamond City 9300, while the A17 Pro sits at the bottom with 1.6 million. To figure out how these chips perform under stress tests, I went ahead and ran Antutu 9 more times and the results were, well, not that great. Mostly for MediaTek since it lost 18% of its peak performance after the 10th run. The Vivo X100 Pro also got the hottest here, hitting a staggering 45 degrees Celsius in the end. Just so you know, since I cannot control a bunch of variables like uh, the smartphone cooling system, power profile and OS optimization in either of these devices, judging their temperature data in the context of chipset comparison does not make any sense. I guess you could take these data as a point of reference, but that's all there is to it. Likewise, the thing about Antutu is that it's not a cross-platform benchmarking tool either, which means you can't really compare the score between Android and iOS devices because Antutu has different scoring mechanisms for them. So I went with Geekbench 6 next, which is in fact a proper cross-platform benchmarking application. And as you can see, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and the Diamond City 9300 have essentially caught up with Apple in terms of multi-core CPU performance. With Apple holding on to a mere 4.7 victory over Qualcomm or an almost negligible 0.3% lead over MediaTek. It's impressive to see the A17 Pro sitting at the top of the table with a 6-core CPU setup versus an 8-core CPU on the other two. Similarly, when it comes to single-core performance, the A17 Pro logged nearly 3,000 points in our test, which puts it at a comfortable 30% lead over what Qualcomm and MediaTek managed. To further put things into perspective about just how strong Apple's CPU game is, the A17 Pro's single-core result is even comparable to top-of-the-line x86 chips like Intel's Core i9-14900K. Anyway, all three of them have excellent sustained performance under stress. Even when I consecutively ran Geekbench test 10 times, there was only like 2 to 3% performance dip between the first and the final test. That too in both single and multi-core workloads. Okay, what about the GPU then? Has Apple made any progress on this front this year? Well, unfortunately, not enough. In practically every graphics-intensive benchmarks I ran, the A17 Pro finished last. While the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and the Diamond City 9300 took home the gold and the silver medal, respectively. Like in 3D Mark's Wildlife Extremes test test, for example, this is a proper demanding benchmark that renders the same 3D scene at 4K resolution 20 times in a row, and the A Gen 3 led the pack with a 33% higher score versus A17 Pro and around 10% versus the Diamond City 9300. It does have the worst stability score out of the three, yes, but the other two are not that better as well, so I'd say it's a solid victory for Qualcomm anyway. Then I ran GFX Bench's Aztec Ruin scene at 1080p resolution, which stimulates all kinds of in-game scenarios like global illumination, motion blur, and ambient occlusion. And here too, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 proved to be too much for the A17 Pro and the Diamond City 9300 with 15% and about 4% higher FPS. Hardware accelerated ray tracing is also a big focus on all three of these chips, so I turned over to 3D Mark Solar based stress test that mimics ray traced heavy gaming workloads for 20 tests straight. And as I expected, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, the Diamond City 9300, and the A17 Pro came in first, second, and third place once again. But even though MediaTek was the runner up in our ray tracing test, it finished with an embarrassing stability score of just 55%, which means this thing lost 45% of its peak performance in the span of the first and the last loop. You guys still with me, right? So uh, to test what these premium processors are capable of, I did not stop at benchmarks either. So I fired up um, Adobe Lightroom next and imported over 200 raw photos to batch apply a custom preset. And somehow the A17 Pro completed this task the slowest at 1 minute and 54 seconds, while the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and the Diamond City 9300 were pretty much neck to neck. I couldn't believe how slow the A17 Pro was here. So I ran the test again only to end up with the same result. But since Lightroom is a famously CPU heavy app and the A17 Pro has a ridiculously powered CPU, this could just be an optimization issue. Matter of fact, the iPhone 15 Pro Max was indeed faster at exporting a 4K video to 1080p in Premiere Rush in my test. Not uh, by a lot compared to the iQOO 12, but uh, by over 31% against the Vivo X100 Pro. 
All right, now with that out of the way, let me talk about gaming. By the way, I ran all my gaming tests via Vtest Perf Dog, which is a reliable tool to analyze the performance of mobile platforms, both Android and iOS. Vtest is also currently offering 50% on their service as a part of their New Year offer. Check out the link in the description below for more details. And of course, the first thing I played on these three phones was Genshin Impact at the highest graphic settings, where the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 managed to pull ahead with a perfect 60 FPS average and a strong 1% low of 54 FPS. The Diamond City 9300 was not that far behind either with a 59% average FPS, although I did notice some frame drops in the latter end of the gameplay. Uh, the A17 Pro, on the other hand, ended with a 58 FPS on average and a 1% low of 52 FPS. As for the temperatures, the iPhone 15 Pro Max was the hottest of the three, hitting an insane 45 degrees at the back of the phone since Apple is still using ordinary graphite sheets to spread the heat. On the contrary, the iQ 12's vapor chamber cooling system impressed me the most as this thing never even hit the 40 degree mark. And this was true for every other game I tested as well. Next up, I tried PUBG Mobile and while the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the iQ 12 delivered a smooth 60fps gameplay at Asia graphics, the X100 Pro was only limited to the basic graphics options if I wanted it to hit 60fps. This is uh, nothing to be worried about though, to be honest, since it's only a matter of time before the Diamond City 9300 collaborates with developers to optimize their games to play nice with this chip. But I was pleasantly surprised to see that Mech Arena has already been optimized to play at 120 FPS here. In fact, the Vivo X100 Pro actually has a better average and 1% low FPS than the iQ12, whereas the iPhone still cannot play this game beyond 60 FPS. Okay, so let's wrap up things now. And based on everything that I've discussed so far, it's pretty clear that Qualcomm, MediaTek and Apple all have made some significant strides with their flagship chip this year. But in the CPU space, Apple's dominance still reigns supreme, especially in terms of single core performance. Although I must say that I'm also really happy with the Diamond City 9300 because MediaTek's decision to go with an all big core CPU design seems to have paid out quite handsomely. Whereas when it comes to GPU, Qualcomm is stronger than ever with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. The Diamond City 9300 is a pretty close second in this contest, but I think the lack of proper optimization from app developers is ultimately what's preventing MediaTek from getting the gold medal. So like I said last year, I want to see more and more smartphone makers adopt MediaTek's flagship chip in their products and launch it in the global market as well. That part's really important because it's the only way we can have this level of competitiveness for years to come. So everybody, that was all for this video. If you found it informative and useful, do uh, consider subscribing to our channel and hitting the thumbs up button. Uh, until then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and I'll be back with a different video.